So to start this video off, I wanted to quickly address some confusion regarding one of my past videos. While the feedback I got on it was more or less what I was expecting it to be, I do believe that a percentage of the viewers may have missed the point I was trying to make. And for good reason, as looking back, I realized I could have clarified things a bit better. So I do apologize if I made it seem as though I was leaning more towards one side. My goal was to merely present the idea and how it made sense to me, so that I could hear out the thoughts of my viewers. Nevertheless, I do try and learn from my mistakes, so I've decided that going forward there will be a disclaimer at the start of every video similar to that one. Welcome to Anime What Ifs. It's a series where I present a random thought or scenario in order to start up a discussion. The information in this video is based off solely what makes sense to me and whatever knowledge I have at the time of making it. It should not be perceived as fact. The goal of this series is to hear and learn from as many different viewpoints as possible, with the hopes that everybody can come to one final conclusion, whatever that may be. So I think we can all agree that the Naruto universe would be a pretty cool place to live. I mean, think about it, becoming a ninja capable of performing a variety of different jutsu? It just seems like a more appealing lifestyle. And I'm sure we all have that favorite jutsu we wish we could perform in the real world. Which got me thinking, what if we could? If you right now were able to learn one and only one ability from Naruto, which would it be? In other words, which jutsu would be best to enhance the life you are currently living? Maybe Rasen Shuriken, Chidori? I mean, those are cool, but are they really that useful? In the shinobi world, definitely, but in the real world, destructive powers like those are almost unnecessary. In fact, if you were spotted throwing a giant spinning disc of destruction or stabbing someone right through the chest, you'd probably be seen as a major threat to society. That could get ugly. So I'm just going to assume you aren't looking to cause trouble to the world or develop a god complex, and instead narrow it down to the jutsu that aren't super detrimental to those around you. Now obviously everyone is different, so you may disagree with me here and there, but personally I think I've gathered 10 abilities that could serve useful for majority of people. And I'ma just say this now, I definitely did not go back and look through each and every jutsu in the Naruto universe as most of these are coming from memory. I'm certain I've missed one or two that could have been placed on this list, so I'm counting on you guys to inform me about it in the comments below. And as an added bonus, I've placed this list in order from abilities I believe to be less useful to the more useful ones. Also, no six path senjutsu. All right, let's begin. So for the number 10 spot on this list, I've decided to put the Sharingan, mainly because it's not that super useful? At least I couldn't really think of many ways it could be. I mean, it's not completely useless as it still allows you to read and anticipate quick movements before they happen, thus increasing your reaction time, which I guess can get you out of some dangerous situations. Even with that though, your body can only move so fast, meaning that when up against an oncoming bullet, it wouldn't really do much for you. But I mean, you'll probably never lose in a one-on-one -on -one fist fight again. Having access to the Sharingan would also give you the ability to mimic movements simply by looking at them, which is also kinda cool, but mainly only when it comes to physical activities. As we saw with Sasuke Uchiha in part 1, he was able to mimic the movements of Rock Lee and copy it in order to reach his level of speed in only a fraction of the time. This would make physical training significantly quicker and easier. That's all I can really think about for this one, honestly. I do want to mention, however, that on rare occasions, the Sharingan has been shown with the ability to control the actions of other living beings. Though controlling humans with the Sharingan is more of a gray area, as the two times we do see it happen, it was Itachi Uchiha who was responsible. I don't believe it was ever specified, but it could very well have just been the Mangekyo Sharingan that did the trick. Also, keep in mind this video is focusing on specific techniques and not any of its extensions, so I'm not including Mangekyo Sharingan for this entry, just the plain old Sharingan. And to anyone now questioning why I decided to put the Sharingan and not Mangekyo for this entry, all I have to say to that is I like my eyesight, I personally don't think any of the Mangekyo Sharingan abilities would be worth becoming blind through overuse. Still, if the Sharingan does indeed possess the ability to control other people, I definitely would say it deserves a higher spot on this list. 
for the number 9 spot, I'm going to have to go with the ability to produce chakra threads. These threads, which we have seen used by puppet masters throughout the series, are often only used for the purpose of manipulating puppets from afar. Now I bet you're wondering, why would any normal person be interested in this? Well, I definitely did not include it on this list so that you can impress your friends with amazing puppet shows, but rather the ability to move things without any physical contact. Having this ability would allow you to manipulate things much more efficiently with minimal effort. As we've seen a few times, the strings can actually attach to other objects including people, moving them around with ease. Skilled users can even suppress the chakra strings to make them appear invisible, though I would assume you would need to put in a bit of practice to be able to accomplish this much. You'd literally be pulling the strings of any operation. The only flaw I guess would be A, people can see them attached to you while you're using them, unless you get that practice in of course, and B, you are limited to 10 strings, one per finger. The number 8 spot on this list is going to the transformation technique. I don't think I really need to explain this one all that much, as I'm sure everybody and their grandmother knows what this technique is capable of accomplishing. With this ability, you can literally look like anyone, and as a result, impersonate anyone. Now, I can't help but feel using this one would most likely result in some sort of malicious activity, but I guess it all really depends on how creative the user can be. As we've already seen, it's possible to transform into something for the sole purpose of using its physical features, such as when Naruto transformed into the Ninetales in his fight against Gara, as he needed something with both claws and fangs. So I guess it all really depends on your environment, not necessarily useless, but you definitely gotta use your head with this one. For the number 7 spot, I decided to put Medical Ninjutsu. This is another one that doesn't really need much explaining as having the ability to not only heal yourself but another person using chakra alone is a pretty invaluable thing to have. But assuming you're already gifted the knowledge and how to perform the technique, the only downside I can see to this is that it wouldn't be something you'd use on a daily basis or very much in your personal life. Still, when things do turn for the worst, you're going to be glad you have it. For the number 6 spot on this list, I've decided to go with Fuinjutsu. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Now for those who don't know what Fuinjutsu is, it is basically the technique that Tenten is best known for, aka the ability to seal and summon anything with the use of scrolls. Having this ability would basically make it so they can transport items or even people from one place to another. Which I think would be a very convenient thing to have when traveling, though I don't know how useful you could call this one. I mean you could literally send anything you want via the mailman, which could save a lot of money. The only downside to this technique is that you need to be physically present to unseal whatever it is you want to release. But again, if you're someone who likes to travel, are looking to smuggle somebody overseas, or just maybe looking to save some space, this is the jutsu for you. Alright, to be fair, this technique sounded a lot cooler in my head, but whatever, maybe you guys can think of some better uses for it. For the number 5 spot, I'm going to have to give it to the wood release ability, aka the first Okage's Jutsu. Just for the fact that, well, you can create a freaking house with it. Now I bet a bunch of you are probably thinking, seriously Grouch, that's all you can think of? Well, let me put it to you this way. Not only could you create a place to live completely free of charge, but you could literally create like 10 other houses, completely free to whatever size you want and just sell them. Assuming you can make one house per day because of, I don't know, chakra limitations, you could literally become a millionaire in like a week or two. It's actually a really good ability to have in modern day living, not to mention you could build other things like, I don't know, a boat or furniture. What I'm trying to say here is that you'll never work a day in your life again. The only downside to this would probably have to be the fact that to use this ability you would need to receive some sort of genetic modification and receive senju cells. So for entertainment purposes, let's say access to this ability would cost you an arm and a leg. Okay, maybe not literally, you'll still probably receive the artificial functioning limbs, but yeah, I honestly don't really see any other downside to having this ability. For the number 4 spot on this list, I'm going to give it to the Psycho Mind Transmission Technique. This technique allows the user to enter someone else's subconscious by placing a hand on the target's head, with the purpose of extracting information from them, even if that information has been forgotten by the individual. Now, the main benefit I see from using this ability is the potential to gather knowledge at an accelerated rate, 
though you would first need to become rather experienced using it. For inexperienced users, it wouldn't be that much different from watching a movie, as you would just have to watch through each memory in its entirety. While more experienced users would be able to go through days worth of memories in just a matter of moments. So if say a college student were able to reach this level of intel gathering, they would probably gain all the knowledge that they need to graduate in just a few weeks. The only issue I see with this one is trying to convince people to let you mentally probe them. Even so, a very useful technique and one that I definitely wouldn't mind having. For the number 3 spot, I gotta give it to Size Ink Ability, aka the Super Beast Imitating Drawing. This technique allows the person to animate anything they draw by using ink, which you must have infused with chakra beforehand. Now let's talk a bit about what I believe its limitations would be. First of all, you'd probably need to be semi-decent at drawing, otherwise you may accidentally summon Doodle Bob. I mean, you don't have to technically, but you might as well take the time when you have the chance since I'm assuming majority of people aren't able to draw as fast as Sai does. However, just because you're able to animate your drawings to life doesn't mean you have to. As seen during Naruto's Ross and Shuriken training, Sai actually was able to create an umbrella using his ink. Which, when you really stop to think about it, it's basically like your own personal portable 3D printer. Which can also create giant flying birds. Now these last two entries may vary per person, but the number two spot for me has to go to the flying raijin technique. This space-time ninjutsu allows a user the ability to instantaneously teleport themselves to any location that they had marked previously with a special seal. This mark can be applied to almost any surface via physical contact of the user, and will remain there forever. After this has been done, the user can now pass through a dimensional void that instantaneously teleports them to the location of the seal. There also appears to be no limit on how many of these seals can be placed down. So you literally just have to visit a certain place once, put a mark down, and you will be able to return to that location instantly whenever you please. You can even teleport others with you, which is a pretty big bonus if you ask me. The only flaw I could really find to it is the sense that the more you take through and the farther distance you travel, the more chakra you're required to use. So I wouldn't say that you could spam this across large distances, though it never really specified how much more chakra is used up. And even if it does use up a good chunk, it's still pretty worth it in my opinion, though I don't believe it is number one. And finally, the number one spot on this list has to go to the Shadow Clone Jutsu, mainly because it allows you to do pretty much anything in a fraction of the time. Now again, this spot and number two are definitely going to vary depending on who's using it, but for me, I'm the type of person who hates knowing that there isn't enough hours in the day to be able to do and see and learn everything I wish I could. That includes being able to pump out more YouTube videos. And it's pretty safe to say that a lot of the others in the YouTube community also agree with me. Now obviously when you think Shadow Clone Jutsu technique, you think of Naruto creating like 1000 clones, but to me that doesn't seem realistically possible for the average person. If it were you or me learning this ability, I'm going to guess that the most we'd be able to produce is about 3 or 4, which seems to be about the average number you see ninja in the Naruto universe conjure up. Even so, I still think it's pretty worth it as you're able to do anything 3 or 4 times faster. Not to mention with more experience you may be able to conjure up more like 5 or 6. I don't know, even with 1 I would be pretty satisfied, not gonna lie. But anyways guys, that was my list. Real quickly before the outro, I just want to go over some of the other techniques that didn't make it on, but still had some pretty useful abilities. I know I'll probably see them in the comments, so I'll just go ahead and clear up why they didn't make it right now. Starting off with Koto Matsukami, the strongest genjutsu capable of controlling anyone's actions, making them do whatever you want. The flaws include, of course, being a Mangekyo ability, going back to what I said about the blindness, and the fact that it can only be used every 10 years unless you are Shisui Uchiha or or have Hashirama DNA inside you. The mind transfer jutsu allows your soul to travel from one person to another and basically become them. The flaw to this one is that your body basically becomes little more than a ragdoll. This one was outdone by the transformation technique, body flickering which just basically makes you faster as well as all the other techniques that do the same. 
being beaten out by the Flying Raijin, which again can take you there instantaneously. The Kamui is another space-time ninjutsu beaten out by the Flying Raijin, which even though its abilities are superior, the fact that it's a Mangekyo ability doesn't really make it worth it. Ignoring the fact that Obito never lost his eyesight despite spamming Kamui, most likely because of the Hashirama cells he had implanted in him. And finally, Hidon's immortality because, uh, I don't know, this one was kind of lame when you really think about it. I mean, you're still basically yourself, you just can't bleed out and die from external injuries. So yeah, I mean, unless you're getting shot at on a regular basis, this one really doesn't seem worth it when compared to the others. Well, that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. Obviously, this one isn't meant to be taken super seriously. It's just a thought that popped into my head one day, and I thought I'd share it with you guys. So let me know what you guys thought about it, and are there any techniques that you thought should have made it on this list? I'd love to hear your ideas. As always, a big thank you to everyone who chooses to support me over on Patreon, and with that being said, guys, I will thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.